are in British Museum, which is home for history. And we are touring the Islamic world and its influence for the West. I'm expecting we will see first Quran, all the earliest reference to Muhammad, reference to Islamic, uh, Islamic traditions and how Islam came to be. But in our first stop, we have one of the examples from the Quran, which is dated 1875. And as they explain what the Quran is, all British Muslims did this, went to Sahih Bukhari, and then gave us the Islamic tradition on how the Quran came to be. It has nothing to do with history. While British Muslim is a home for history, all it did was just get rid of the history and then give us the Islamic tradition regarding the Quran. British Museum, home of history, tells us a little bit about how, according to Islamic tradition, the vision within Islamic community started soon after the death of Muhammad. Today, there are two big majority Muslim groups, Shias and Sunnis, which divides regarding what happened in the life of Muhammad. They disagree regarding the oral tradition, so so-called reliable oral tradition. In here, what we see is a British Muslim confirms that yeah, there is a division between um, Muslim community and Sunnis, and then also in the tiles, one of the interesting things we notice is time contains the name of Allah and Muhammad together, as well as the name of Sahabais. And in here, there is a um, small information regarding how the five pillars of Islam started, according to the British Museum, which is um, which hasn't given us the historical reference. It has happened in 622. I am hunting for the reference for that, historical reference. As well as we've got another section which talks about the Hajj and people's visit to Kaaba. As you listen to the um, curate, they explain us according to Quran, Abraham Ishmael built the Kaaba. I, I am trying to find the reference from the Quran as well. So far, by the, while British Museum gives us the um, history, gives us the history of Islam, all simply they do is they went to the Islamic tradition and then they summarize Islamic tradition to us. It has nothing to do with history so far. We are in British Museum, home of history. As we go through the Islamic um, references, what we see is, according to the British Museum, that Dimmis who lived with Muslims under the Islam, they were able to practice their faith freely. This is according to the British Museum. Yet, according to Islam, that was never the case. Christians were not able to wear crosses. Christians were not able to ring the church bells. Christians were not able to celebrate their special um, events. Christians has to pay jizya, which is the money of the protection, under the humiliation. When we look at the, even the Islamic tradition, Islamic tradition doesn't tell us Christians were able to practice their belief freely. That is simply false, what the British Museum is telling us. British Museum, home of history, tells us about Sahih Bukhari when it comes to the, uh, Islam, Islam's influence in the West. And one of the reference for Sahih Bukhari here is dated 18th century. I'm sure you are all surprised, uh, but not shocked that we don't have the Sahih Bukhari from 870. In British Museum, Sahih Bukhari is 18th century. And then British Museum simply tells us it is one of the most reliable customs of Muhammad. So we are at British Museum in home of history. British Museum um, shows us the Quran. Quran is the holy book of Muslims. And when we look at the examples here, one of the Quran is dated. Apparently, 1785. 
another Quran is again dated from 1700s and the third Quran is again dated 18th century. But what I want us to kind of focus on a little bit, this Quran which is dated 1800s, 1805 or 04, when you look carefully, you can see later insertions and additions to the Quranic manuscripts. So far, we've, we've been through the rooms and the panels. We have not seen the Quran from the time of Muhammad. We have not seen the Quran from the time of Umar or Uthman. And it has been mentioned in nowhere what happened to that Quran. All we get is how British Museum represent Islam from the Islamic tradition, which is very biased. When we talk about Islam, one of the things that comes to our mind is the dress code for women, burqa. So, what we have here as we pass through the dresses which Muslim, which Muslim women were wearing. Can you see burqa? No. Let's come to the next one. Those are very, very nice dresses. But they are not Purka. And other very nice dresses. And even in here, we have something women would wear when they get, get married. And another beautiful dress for females. But none of them are burqa. When we say Islam, when we say Muslim, especially when we say Muslim woman, all what comes to our mind is dress code Allah tells Muslims to put it on. And we are looking at the, how Islam influenced the West and there is no burqa. While in all of the rooms, there are two rooms here, we walk through, we have not seen even one reference to burqa or one picture of the burqa. Yet today, in somehow, Muslim women are covering their hair as well as covering their face. I wonder how this Islam influenced the West with these dresses, yet today West is trying to cover up with the burqa. Islamic influence in the Western world. Music. In here we've got beautiful instruments where Muslim people played and it affected the world with art, music, it, it, it gave it to the world. But when we look at the teachings of Islam, all Islam tells us, if I am correct, music is haram in Islam, but apparently, according to the British Museum, it has the influence to change the Western world. And over here, we do have references for the poems. And according to the Islamic tradition, Muhammad killed people who wrote poem. But in somehow, the British Museum, and then gives us very different image, which Islam teaches. British Museums agrees with Muslims regarding the perfect preservation of the oral tradition. Which is supposed to be the history of home British Museum. It talks about how oral tradition influenced other languages without any reference. I wonder how people were able to find out in 870 what Muhammad said 250 years ago while all those people were dead. British Museum, home of history, simply goes with the Muslim tradition by telling us oral tradition is awesome. That's not very awesome at all. We are in British Museum, home of history. And what we've done is we visited two rooms because apparently British Museum gave two rooms to Islam and Islam's influence to the Western world. We were hoping to find a historical side of Islam, because British Museum and the end is home for the history. But we couldn't find the earliest reference to Muhammad. We couldn't find the earliest Quran. We couldn't find any reference 
to burqa. We couldn't find, uh, according to Islamic tradition, Islam spread by sword. We couldn't find any references um, to those. We couldn't find camel urine, which takes very big part in Islam. We couldn't find dates, uh, which people need, need to uh, eat it when they get poisoned. Um, and there are lots of basic things we couldn't find. But what we find is turtle. I guess I'm going to ponder how the turtle influenced the Western world.